been so long. I haven't played Armour 3 for 20 days. 20 days. I can give you salvation. Who's there? He's playing Armour 3 on the toilet. You are actually the worst pilot I've ever seen. Oh my <laughs> fucking god, what the fuck, man? This guy is actually so <laughs> fucking bad. What are you doing? Nice pilot, good job. Fucking warm. Fuck you, man. Now, before we get into this video, guys, which is going to cover how you can actually play all of your video games, connect to your desktop remotely with a very cool free piece of software, I'm just going to talk a little bit about where I've been and just generally the future of this YouTube channel. Um, if you don't want to hear about all of this, then I will leave a timestamp on the top of this video and you can skip to it right away and just get straight into the video. It's no secret that I am absolutely inconsistent as shit when it comes to uploading on YouTube. I hold my hands up there, working a full-time job. I basically, if you don't know what I do, I actually work in the court service and that is quite a stressful job in and of itself. It's nine to five, five days a week. And when I get to the weekend, it's literally just getting ready for the next working week. If that makes sense, doing all of my prep and just doing boring adult stuff, basically. Like I found as I've got older, I've got less and less time for games and by extension less time for YouTube. Now, while that is a great shame, it's unfortunately just something that I've had to come to terms with, really. When I sort of look at my YouTube channel as a whole, obviously, you know, there are lots of people who are, I'm extremely grateful for who have given me their support over the years. But in terms of sort of continuing things a bit further, I found that it's quite an unsustainable platform. The time that I have to put into videos is, is not really workable. So for an average 10 minute video, like that top five Vietnam mods video, for example, that took me like a good three full days. When I say three full days, I mean that's complete days of editing, filming, gathering clips, getting everything ready, making sure it looks nice, rendering it, uploading it, all of that time. And that is time which I just unfortunately don't have now if i wanted to invest that time into for example my weekends or my evenings i just feel like i need more of a uh, an incentive let's say to do that i'm going to cut straight to the chase AdSense is not something which pays well. Twitch was was okay, but I, I'm not really too interested in streaming at the moment. And Patreon is what I'm currently looking at and also YouTube members. I've really sort of tried to push this off for as long as possible and to just sort of keep YouTube as a hobby. But it's got to the point now where realistically the, the future of this YouTube channel is genuinely in jeopardy because I can't see a way to sort of continue maintaining the quality of video Videos that I currently do whilst also having a life <laughs> and and working full-time. I know some people do manage it but yeah, we've only got to look at some examples. Frankie on PC of course being one. He tried to do both. He tried to be a, a solicitor and do YouTube at the same time and it didn't work out for him. And now obviously we're all very pleased because he's made a return but he had to drop one thing. And I think that the key thing for me really is just it's having that sort of incentive to actually come back to the platform to put time into those videos obviously some of you guys will think yeah that's just a load of shit why should we pay you to make videos well that's your opinion you could obviously completely welcome to it but this is just my sort of personal appeal I guess and I've got my own reasons for it and and just making sure that I can continue to bring the videos that you guys know and love to this channel it's a bit of a sad opening to a video but hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from I'm gonna leave patreon and YouTube members stuff down below if you fancy checking it out of course completely not compulsory but it's just something which I think I I'm going to start implementing for future videos 
So why should you use Moonlight? Well, if, like me, you move around lots and you have a sort of big computer PC rig sat somewhere, it's not really practical to bring it around with you everywhere you go. Now, maybe you're studying at uni or you're on the go all the time because that's just sort of part of your job. Whatever it may be, this is actually something which you could start implementing to make sure that you can basically game wherever you want. Now, it benefits me in two main ways. First one is gaming on the go. And the second one is downloading games or updates and also rendering videos whilst I'm at work or elsewhere. It's really useful because if, if I'm away and I need to sort of do something where the computer is just completely idle, I can just leave it doing that. So for example, when I was at work, I could open up Moonlight and I could get the BF2042 early access preload started whilst I was at work. I'm not sure how much it was worth it in the end <laughs> because that game is broken as hell. But you know, it's it's a benefit. Moonlight is an open source freeware and it is unfortunately for NVIDIA GPUs only as it uses part of NVIDIA Shield. And there are alternatives for AMD users such as AMD Link and for those who don't have gaming PCs to begin with there is Google Stadia and other services like Shadow Cloud PC. You can stream up to 4K 120 FPS on Moonlight but obviously you'd need some pretty killer internet for that. You can also stream your entire desktop which has been so so handy for me to get sort of YouTube videos edited on go or rendered whilst I'm away. For example that top Vietnam Armor 3 mods video was edited entirely using Moonlight miles away from my PC. Now finally you can stream your PC to devices like your phone, tablet, Mac and more which is really handy for those toilet kills in Battlefield. I go to the bathroom you're not playing Battlefield. You're shitting in a bucket and you're playing Battlefield. <laughs> I can't believe we didn't think of that. Just to run over some like usual disclaimers and housekeeping, no this is not a sponsored review, it's just something that I find useful. You will also not be able to use certain devices over Moonlight, like for example track IR, webcams, audio sources like microphones and flight joysticks. You can use your basic keyboard and mouse and headphone peripherals, but that's it unfortunately. If you want to play with friends, your best bet is to call them separately on your phone with Discord or something similar. Now final warning, you will not be popping headshots like shroud with this software all remote streaming services have inherent limitations due to latency and latency in fps games could spell some keyboard snapping moments so your mileage may vary for that reason i recommend using vehicles in games like bf 2042 armor 3 etc a single player in anything else you can do fps games as you're seeing on screen now it is fairly pleasant but you will be at a massive disadvantage Oh, especially in BF2042, if you come up against some of these godforsaken PP29 sweat lords, I swear to God, if any of you watching this use that <laughs> overpowered <laughs> gun, I will track you down and... Now, in terms of peripherals, having a big monitor to put your games up on is a solid recommendation as it will help you to counter the lower bitrate by having more screen real estate to spot enemies. Now, something with at least 75 FPS refresh rate is a good bet. This is what Moonlight caps at unless you use the experimental option to unlock further FPS. Now, this one I have here is the LG 32 Q9 600. Surprisingly, I'm not sure if the camera does it justice here really, but the pixel density looks really good when I stream at 1440p on the desktop. It's also a good idea to plug a keyboard and mouse into your laptop or whatever device you may be using for the best gaming performance as laptop keyboards usually don't have anti-ghosting keys meaning that you can't press multiple keys at once. The keyboard I use is an AOC GK200 gaming keyboard. I use a Logitech Pebble as my mouse and its slim build makes it perfect for portability. I also use my laptop bag is my mouse mat. I, I know, I know, you will be horrified by that. But uh, the rubber padding actually works surprisingly well. Kind of like my Razer Goliath mouse mat at home. It has the resistance that I'm looking for. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Now, this is the most important one by far. The internet in the second house I'm in is very good. The speeds are all fine but Wi-Fi just doesn't cut the mustard. I was getting a red lower your bitrate warning in the bottom left continually on Wi-Fi. You could only manage 1080p 60fps with 15 to 18 megabytes per second bitrate, which looked 
awful on a 32 inch monitor. As soon as I made the switch to Ethernet, it was night and day. I could bump up my moonlight settings and games looked and felt so much better. If you don't have a router near to your laptop, a good power line adapter, which basically turns your mains electricity into an Ethernet hotspot, is the TP-Link AV1300. It's pricey, but worth it if you plan on making remote gaming a semi-permanent thing. Also invest in some high quality ethernet cables. I went for two Ugreen Cat8 40 gigabytes per second ethernet cables and haven't looked back since. So if you're sold on the benefits of remote gaming and you want to put your Nvidia GPU to good use whilst you're away, follow this quick guide to get started with Moonlight. Firstly, you need to download GeForce Experience and then reboot your PC. Click the settings cog in GeForce Experience and then go to the shields tab toggle the game stream button so it's on. To stream your desktop to, click add and then navigate to the following path. Search for mstsc.exe, all of this will be down below so you can just copy and paste and open it. And next, you want to download Moonlight on both computers or devices, rebooting afterwards if necessary. Open Moonlight on the host computer and it should bring up your PC automatically. Click to connect and in the bottom right, NVIDIA Shield will open with a four digit pin. Enter this and accept the pairing dialog. This connects your host to Moonlight. On your second device, you should usually be connected to the same network for the first time. If this is the case, open Moonlight and your host PC should come up automatically. Click to connect as before and enter the pin from your host PC. If it doesn't come up, you'll need to find it manually using its IP address. So on your host PC, you'll need to go to whatismyipaddress.com or something equivalent and copy and paste the IP4 address into Moonlight on your secondary device. It should now come up. If it doesn't, I recommend downloading Moonlight's internet hosting tool from their website to resolve any network issues you may be having. And that's it. You are now connected to Moonlight and you can fly cough passengers to their early graves in Armour 3 from the comfort of your garden or spidercraft up buildings in Broken Field 2042 while sitting on the bog. The world is your oyster. To connect to your desktop, simply click MSTSC on Moonlight and it will launch in all its glory. Now in terms of settings, I would recommend matching your monitor's resolution if possible. So if you've got a 1080p laptop screen, stick it to 1080p on Moonlight. 60fps works fine for most FPS games and you could probably drop it down to 30 in Armour 3 where it's usually lower anyway. 20 megabytes per second is a good standard for your bitrate. Try not to go any lower than 10 to 15 though as it will look hella potato-y. Full screen on, vSync off and depending on your usage if you're gaming untick optimized mouse for remote desktop because this will give you some really weird acceleration. If you're video editing and whatnot of course tick this option. Untick optimized game settings for streaming and quit app on host PC after ending stream. Just untick these two. In the interest of time, I won't walk you through how to force your PC to wake up from sleep at a certain time, but I will link a handy guide in the description. This basically allows for you to sleep your host PC when you're finished gaming, and your PC will then wake up at a scheduled time each day. This is really handy if you want to play games whilst away for long periods, but you also don't want to burn your PC components out by having it turned on all the time and also save the planet and all that. Finally, there is loads of troubleshooting stuff available on the Moonlight website. They have their own Discord and they're very active seemingly with the community. Now, my biggest troubleshooting tip for anyone with a dynamic IP address, which means an IP address which changes every so often, is to also have Google Remote downloaded on your computer. So on the off chance that your host PC magically loses connection because your IP address has changed, you can at least connect with Google Remote. Go to whatismyipaddress.com again and simply copy and paste the IP4 address into your Moonlight on your secondary device. This will reconnect you to Moonlight. Have fun, I hope this helps, and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Happy toilet gaming, Tommy out.